Good morning. Well, it's a beautiful morning here in Denmark. How are you, Marion? I'm fine, thank you. It's not yeah. that beautiful sort of weather over here. A bit overcast. So you are, so you are in London. I'm you. in London, yes. yes. Hello, Bo. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine too. Thank you. And today we have uh, Marion had uh, invited special guest, Turon Victoria Butler. And Marion, you can make a presentation of Turon or you can talk together. Now you have about 45 50 minutes, so go along, ladies. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, again, just hello to Bo once again, and to you, Annette, for taking this little meeting in which we are doing. And of course, welcome to you, Gwilwon. It is indeed a pleasure to have you here as being the Viking Vulve. And I think it is absolutely extraordinary and fantastic because that we know about Scandinavian, the Nordic countries, the Vikings, their life. Uh, we have got fantastic museums. We have got many, many things regarded to the Viking era. Not many people know, I would say, the full story about the Vikings as what you do. Uh, the meaning with the Mi uh, Vikings and so forth. We all see Viking hats with horns on and things like that. And we all think, oh, the Vikings, you have got horns and what are they used for? And I've actually heard stories that and this is, I think it's very amusing. And that is, oh, well, the Vikings used to have those ones because you used to screw one off like that and put the milk into it or whatever they drank, then drank and then screwed it back on again. So that was the stories about the Viking hat, how we could figure out that you were Viking and so forth. So it is lovely to have you here, but you can put us right, if you like, about some of the Viking myth, as we call them, the stories, the sagas, in which I know that you are expert in, darling, because I have worked with you. Uh, we have met each other, we have worked together, because I have always had this idea of putting people together. Uh, it doesn't matter of which time, the little thread, as I call it, the red thread in the middle is spirituality, mediumship. It's all sort of things like that, which I know does not begin just with mediumship or people who does terrors or whatever, it actually goes a lot further back. There's a lot with people who believes in metal, uh, some iron, use it like the Sami people. Uh, you, of course, have had, got other nature people around, but we have also got the Viking people. And, of course, things I would like to ask you about because it is so much up and turning today, I think, with all our beliefs. And the same with you, Gurun. Uh, there is a form of, a, 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 it's probably wrong of saying a religion with it, but we call it legalized, that you, in your right, can perform like a, a Viking marriage, a death, or whatever <laughs> you have it in Denmark. Has it not become legalized in one state where you are allowed to do that or been recognized, uh, you know, uh, as a way of life in Denmark? I think I'm probably right in that. But it would be fantastic, Gurun, that you will tell us a little about that because that uh, I have seen you in circles, is what I call it, where a performance has been done. But it is to let everybody know that it is wonderful to have worked with you uh, in so many places and learned a little bit about your life as a vulving, I hope that was said properly, <laughs> which I found absolutely fascinating. But what I found even more fascinating, and that was how that I saw this red thread between you and I when we first met. Because we met to one of my workshops, you came, you wanted to see, and automatically, I looked at you and going, I like her. She's like me. She looks like me a bit. I like this woman. And I remember we were sitting and talking and talking together. 
And I asked you to show me in this workshop what was evolving, because that's what we started to talk about. And you came the very next day with beautiful shawl. You would show everybody else the hood, the staff. You were sitting on your skin. And then you had something you blew in and something that we rattled. And you were sitting there and you started to take this fantastic thing over your head. And it was almost like a semi-trance took place underneath your hood. And I found that absolutely fascinating. And you said to me, now, if I don't get out of this trance, or out of what I'm saying, you must ring my bell. And I went, oh, all right. And again, I said to myself, that's what we do in a physical circle. If we can't get the medium out, we will ring something. We will do something to get them awake, to get back out again in whatever trance state it was. So my interest in you grew because I started to see so many similarities that it was fantastic. So that's how our friendship has developed, where I have asked lots of questions. I love it. When you tell me the stories, I love it. <laughs> we met at the market. I love it. <laughs> so there's many things. So I would like you, dear, dear cool one, to talk a little bit about yourself and what is your interest, of course, you have within the Viking era, but when did it begin? I think a lot of people would like to know, how did you start this and, and why the Vikings and, and so forth? So I want to bid you welcome and ask you to please tell us. Up to you. Good Hi, <laughs> Hi Marion. Uh, first of all, very, very thank you for inviting me. I'm very, very happy to be here. I always enjoy your company, you know that. Um, now you have asked me a lot of questions. In <laughs> I have to see if I can uh, remember them all. Um, first of all, the thing with the horns and the Vikings is absolutely a legend. A story uh, made up, I think, by the Christians to make the Vikings look like devils, like the horns. Wow, yes, of course. Uh, so uh, uh, that, there's no evidence that they ever had a helmet for fighting with horns on. It would also make a, a lot of of uh, problems um, and uh, yes it's also true I am as a true as it's called um, is that what it's called so I'm just yes. my light on. Um, uh, I believe in the old Nordic god I have done that since I was a kid my dad was also as a true we never really performed rituals when I was a kid uh, it came when I grew up and met more as a true people um, but in, how was it, 1997, I think, uh, I met up with a lot of other acid people. No, 1996, it doesn't matter. But we met and then we started uh, the acid association, uh, Fonsider, which are legalized in Denmark. We are allowed to make uh, weddings and we have our own uh, sanitary. Um, so uh, we we are uh, we are you can say a real church, uh, but no matter what you can believe what you want, um, and you don't need that legalization because it's only about well to make legal weddings um, and you can get buried wherever you want uh, ah not wherever but you you I would say it's it, it's good to have this mark on you because that that make us more you know uh, people take us more serious uh, because it's, it's not just uh, just for fun this thing here mm -hmm. um and uh, i started in the same time in this viking world where we are <clears throat> we are a lot of people who are uh, traveling around and going to Viking markets and showing how the Vikings might have lived, how uh, the cloth has been, how um, yeah, how the spirit, handcrafting, fighting, everything. And very, very uh, early, they start to call me a vulva. Um, I was absolutely not a vulva by then, uh, but they called me vulva because I was very much into the sources, all the written things about the religion, about the belief. Um, I have really studied that hard. 
Um, and I knew a lot about herbs, healing herbs. Um, and that was actually it. Um, I started with some shamanic training. Uh, it didn't really work out. I, it, I couldn't get into the trance. Um, but uh, uh, as the years went by, I met my husband, I get kids, I get older. Um, and then, well, yeah, things happened, I will say like that. Uh, I was working at the Viking Center uh, where I was uh, more and more the vulva, always performed the, the rituals out there. And uh, once I got the idea that I would like to, to learn more about the runes, uh, especially how to, uh, how to give good advice with the runes. And uh, then I met an uh, Icelandic vulva just by yeah, uh, coincidence. And I don't really believe in coincidences. So I met her and uh, she didn't taught me how to do, but she pointed out the way because the runes, things with the runes is that you cannot learn it from a book you cannot learn it in a workshop you have to learn it from the runes uh, or from your spirit guides on the other side um, and i worked a lot with them and and they talk more and more to me and, and now they are really a good tool for me uh, also i uh, started with something called a seder um, and the uh, Seder is, uh, is a kind of, of trance. Um, that was the one you, you talked about. And maybe, Annette, if you can put out uh, my pictures, then we can look, uh, see how I, uh, how I sit when I do this Seder. Um, one of uh, um, the really important things uh, about it um, is the stitch. You can see the stitch I'm sitting with. We have a stitch, and that is our um, connection with the the, the world, uh, or with the connection with 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 the earth. Um, and I have my my cloak, uh, so I can sit and and make myself a space where I'm totally fixed in it. Um, the, the the picture in the middle, where I'm uh, painted, it's basically for showing because we think that the vulva might have done that. Uh, back in time, based on the finding in the grave, um, so we can go go back to to me again, because I want to show you my stick for real. I have it here, and here you have the bells that Marion talked talked about. If I can't get out of the trance, I can rattle them. I can do it myself. Uh, now I have also made a special dress uh, for doing this. Uh, I didn't have that when I met you last, Marion. No, you oh, didn't. Uh, yeah. What is interesting with it is that I have mirrors on it. Yeah. Uh, because we know from some traditions, uh, especially from the uh, Genghis Khan, uh, shamans, they have mirrors on their uh, garment uh, to, to keep away the, the evil spirits. I've told you something which is very interesting because that uh, having also Shesten Marakrat, who is a, 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 a shaman from Norway, she's a Sami. Yeah. Their belt and on the bottom of their kofta, they have yeah. also the mirrors. And also in, 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 a, in a very special grave found in, in Fyrkat in Denmark. Um, there is a grave, they're really sure it's a, it's a Bilbas grave. And I'm very inspired by that grave. There also is little pieces of glass. And they say that it might have been a little, little mirror. Uh, but they don't really know, but it gives really much sense uh, to me. Um, so therefore I'm inspired by this to protect myself. Um, because what is also very important for me to say is that um, these days many many young people especially young women they found out they're witches it's okay and then they found out oh no I'm not a witch I'm a vulva and you're sitting there 16 years old and say you're a vulva and it's um, sorry to say the work of the world vulva is I will not say dangerous, but it can be. 
if you are start to making this trans work and you're not trained in it or you're not old enough to 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 handle it then you can get lost in your own mind and then you're totally out uh, i think it would be the same in the what you're working with marion we have had that so many times when i have seen the danger in trans work people everybody wants to be trans medium just like what you're saying and they love to sit and experiment with it but very few actually understand about and what trans is it is a long progression it yeah. takes years to train it takes a long time to be able to go in and out in trance and not play around with it and one thing i have to say that we have always said within our movement, and that is you should never show trance on television, no. or anywhere like that. You should never ever show it because you have now the responsibility. So all the people that you're showing that is perfectly all right and sit and perform trance anywhere you like, and that is not it. So no. yes, I understand you. Yeah. And, and that, that is very uh, important for me to have this out. It's not for something like I want to be something special, but I know it, it requires a really huge grade of discipline because you need to, to, to know how to go back yourself. You don't have anybody to, to help you back. You need to leave this fantastic world yourself and go back. Mm -hmm. so, so therefore, it's, it's not something you just play with. Um, but but uh, that has been my path. Uh, and as... Then also the healing came in and um, I made a regression therapy by a lady and I went back uh, to fur further lives and I, uh, I met my oldest teacher. And from that day, my, my hands start to, uh, start to bzz when, when they some, sometimes can help people. Mm -hmm. uh, I also found out that, that um, making sounds, it's called in, in Old Norse Galter. It's a magic songs. Uh, it's also one of my ways to heal people. Uh, we have some very old poems uh, or chants, you can say, uh, the Mercer book chants. Um, and I sing them and, and they can heal. And uh, then I found out that there was a piece of a skull. And now I want the pictures back again, Aneta, please. Um, there was a piece of, of a skull found in, uh, in Ribe. I live nearby Rebe, therefore I'm known as the Vulva from Rebe. And um, this piece of skull was very strange. You have it, uh, the, the, the dark brown one is uh, the one from Rebe, the finding. Uh, there is runes on it, and the runes say something like uh, um, Ulvor and Odin and Haitir. Uh, this uh, hole is against pain, and the dwarf is surrendered. And then there says Bur. Uh, just where the hole is um, and you can see the runes on the pitch in the middle and then I had this one copied uh, the picture to, with the white one is, um, is my copy of it because I had the idea it's found in 700 no, it, it dated 725 and um, I need to found, find out what is this for how can I use this one? And if you take the pictures away, I can show you my piece of it. Um, first, they thought that um, this one was made uh, as a trepanation. I have it here. Uh, but this hole is made from the inside, so it's not a trepanation. Um, and then they thought it was something like an amulet to hang on your around your neck, but there's nothing sign of that any thread has been through it. And then I got the idea that I would sing the runes and then I could make a sound through the hole. And as you say, with the trance, I will never give the whole thing out uh, if I'm not uh, treating something, somebody with it, but I can make the sound. I say this boor standing here through the hole. And I found out that this sound 
first the singing and then the sound, it can take away headaches and muscle pains and other kinds of pains. I don't know if you remember, um, Marianne, when we were by gym. Yes. I, yeah. I made the sound also. And next day I got an email from a lady who was there and she said to me she had some very hard pain in her face when she came in. She had, has some kind of a disease. I can't remember what name it is. But um, when I made the sound, the, the pain disappeared. I remember that very well because it was an extraordinary day having nearly got hundreds and hundreds of people coming to watching my demonstration, your talk. We have put it together as one. Mm -hmm. You showed off what it would say to be a vulva, uh, part of the Viking where Kim, uh, Jim Lundgren is also with his, uh, his Viking castle and so forth. And what was actually extraordinary at that time when you blow and you were sitting there blowing it and you can feel the frequency and the vibration coming out in waves when you do it it's fantastic really really is so yes i have been there i have seen it and certainly it did relax everybody down and it was fantastic yeah uh, it, uh, i'm so happy for this uh, thing here uh, i have to say uh, and also that i was allowed to find out how it should be used uh, because i think it's my uh, my spirit guides who uh, who give me this path um, I can choose, do I want to, to take the path or do I want to have a more normal life? Because making these things here do not make you have a normal life, to be honest. You cannot uh, do that. And I think that's also why it was not, um, I could not do it before I get older because I have to be f finished with, with my kids. My kids have to be grown up so I could concentrate totally on this work here um, also the runes could I talk a lot about but I think before we stop here as maybe some of the last things we do is I want to drag a rune for 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 the three of you uh, <laughs> <That's it. laughs> look at the old sitting with the thumbs up <laughs> I just think that it's fantastic and let me just add on with your blowing of, of the skull I had many people afterwards that came to me and wrote to me you know that uh, skull that uh, developing uh, her you know guru and you and I went yeah was that a real skull dug up from a grave and I went no <laughs> Did you listen to her story? They were absolutely petrified that it was a real skull that you were sitting there playing with. But it is. Yeah, but I have to sort of calm the bookers down and say, no, no, it's, it's fine. It's as you know what she's doing. It's it's all right. People were panicking. <laughs> Almost like if she was going to get possessed out of it. It was just so, for me, it was just so funny because of people's attitude, people sort of looking, do you understand it, to the background and, and not really understanding it. That's why this is so good, Victoria, mm -hmm. to have this up here, uh, sitting here with explaining to people, telling people, making people aware of the things from the Viking, the Vulving, even you ruin in a minute your staff, the ringing of the bell and so forth. It is so important. I think it's important also because I think today, one of the huge problems today is that people are so afraid of death. Absolutely. Uh, death is, to be honest, death is normal. We have to, yeah. to, to, to die, all of us, someday. But as they say in Game of Thrones, not today. Um, but uh, um, still, we have to go there once. Um, death people, they are death. Um, the body is death. And, and, and using a part of it is for me, it's no problem for me. Um, I think it's, we have to... We have to be more relaxed about death. We have a saying within my work, and that is, we are born to die. Yeah. Simple as that. You are born, and all of us who's watching this one here, you are born, and you will die. Yeah. That is the only thing that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is interesting. But yeah. for me, it is like, I'm now going to ask you, 
where does the runes come in? Why using the rune? I just want to know a little bit more about your runes because they are fascinating.